Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. With this, I go to some of the life stories which I am going to share with you in next few minutes. I might have been painted in the posters or in my introduction as somebody very big in professional and personal space, but let me tell you, very candidly, I am a much lesser mortal in life. I hardly, I would hardly deserve that. And when I say so, I had been a very timid boy, literally timid boy, somebody really poor in participation, somebody who was, you know, really uh, scared of any kind of limelight in life. And here I stand in front of you today at this prestigious platform TEDx to share about my life experiences. Let's get started. The first narrative, as you can see, is about mathematics. So mathematics is something which became my passion as I lived for and through it. Starting my journey with graduation in mathematics honors, followed by MSc mathematics with merits in two subjects, 99% and 100%, way back in 1985 when it was absolutely something rare, mathematics became somewhat very important. And it, it, it became so important, imagine, even my career, when I chose my career, first career, as an Indian Air Force officer, for my branch, the minimum eligibility condition itself was MSc Mathematics or MSc Physics. And Mathematics played such a pivotal role even during career progression in, in this uh, growth story that imagine during my mid-career stage, when it came to the nuances of numerical weather prediction modeling, something very niche subject in Air Force during those times in 2004 I am talking about. Or even in the recent times, my appointment as intergovernmental international expert member for World Meteorological Organization of United Nations, it played a key role. Now all of you in this audience, I am sure, must be wondering and thinking that this guy must be really mathematics witch kid. Somebody with huge aptitude for mathematics during the school times. I think the assumption is logical, but unfortunately grossly wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I was really scared, scared is the word, during my school days in mathematics. Why scared? I was a paranoid about mathematics. And it was basically because of two reasons. Superficial understanding of the subject and continued poor performance. The, the story continued to an extent that I used to even avoid the eyes of mathematics teachers, not only in the class, even in the corridors, and I will hide myself. I believe, believe me what I'm saying, right? And the story continued till 10th standard, and till 11th standard happened, and it was a disaster. You know what happened? The so-called scientific advisor to government of India flunked in mathematics and he had a compartment actually. Imagine, he had a compartment in mathematics 11 standard. So, those who generally used to consider me a sharp boy, at least my parents, my relatives, I had no face to show at home, neither at school. But this failure perhaps brought a silver lining for me and the silver lining was that it, did, it not only had cut me to the size, but also helped me to introspect that why the hell I am, you know, I am fearing so much about this subject actually. And imagine, one year in 12th, when I joined ranks along with my classmates after clearing the compartment exam, one year of hard work in mathematics, I performed exceptionally well in 12th board exams. 
too even my surprise and the journey the but didn't stop as i already told you whether it was my graduation and post graduation and so on so there is a profound lesson there is a profound lesson here the lesson of failures that everything is not over and the first lesson lesson which which came to my mind i should i must share with you that if you never fail you are not probably trying hard enough in life actually having said that why do we only say that we need to learn from failures of ours as we progress in life why can't we learn from failures of others as we become conscious as we become alive as we visual, become vigilant about the environment around us so why not learn from failures of others thirdly and importantly it is very important you can you can keep on blaming your you know institutions your teachers your the bad curriculum when it comes to you know any failure in your life but is it the right thing to do i think the better thing is to accept your own mistakes and move on from school days i now take you to the next stage of my college and you know what happened when i reached college i chose college by design a college of sir amitabh bachchan right that is the first reason and the second and you know important reason was also that the department of mathematics was the best in delhi university north campus of kirodimal college but my euphoria of joining north campus soon faded away within no time when i realized that my biggest handicap in this college is going to be angreji i realized that in the environment where i am with the, the people along with where i am i am going to be always feeling afraid scared about my this lack of communication so what did i do what did i do i simply picked up within 15 days i realized that there is a there is a huge possibility that i will not be able to participate in the college activities i will not be able to interact with my own friends in my own class at the level playing field and importantly i will also not be able to perhaps make one single girlfriend of mine and this all prompted me to approach my own classmate anuj bhatnagar who recently retired as assistant commissioner of income tax from bombay i approached him the proposition was that i am going to talk to him in angreji and he is going to privately correct me when it came to angreji and within short span to great surprise of mine not that i became fluent but has perhaps within a month or two i became comfortable in this frangi language and rest is the history you know during all the three years of graduation when it came to the mathematics society of the college i was the joint secretary general secretary and president and the joint secretary i was chosen within first three months of my entering into the college i was selected as senior under officer ncc based on deeper leadership skills the, the parameters the people had decided not only of my college but the entire army battalion which comprised of eight colleges in its ambit in north campus the dramatic society the music society particularly because amitabh bachchan was the general secretary of you know this this particular society and so on the list is endless on what i all you know participated when it came to college and imagine ladies and gentlemen i could also manage one girlfriend now if my college boom if my college classmates or my college people are listening to this talk they will definitely scarily 
cut me to the side and they were saying, come on Rajiv, you had only one girlfriend, give us a break actually. Okay, with this, I draw three lessons of life. And before I draw these three lessons of life, I think you must appreciate all, with all the generation, my generation, your generation, the previous generation, the biggest fear in the life which generally people have been you know, looking at when it comes to this type of failure is fear, fear of being labeled. Fear of being labeled. Kush to log kahenge. I think I overcame this fear actually. Uh, there, there was a fear of being labeled by my own class, you know, college mates, my own classmates, but I didn't wish to be put in a box. I simply moved on and overcame my fears. And the first lesson which I draw from here is the lesson of resources. We will always have the limited resources. But it is up to us that how do we capitalize on these resources. Anuj Bhatnagar not only became my resource, but an entire support system throughout my life. The second lesson I will talk about the importance of initiative. There may be situations in your life which you feel handicapped, which you are not able to create. Don't you think it is important to take initiative in this process and lastly the confidence my dear friends confidence is not an act I again repeat confidence is not an act you can learn it is a way of growing in life and that brings me to coin what I generally popularly say triple A theory acknowledge accept and act you are under no obligation to be the same person you were a year, month or even 15 minutes ago. You have the right given by the great almighty to you to continue growing and continue evolving. The next story I bring to you is about discipline known as meteorology. A discipline which was not, which is not only challenging even for the present day meteorologists but imagine it was huge challenge for the greatest scientist on this earth. Any guesses? Yes. Wonderful audience. And I just read what he said. He said my first profession was meteorology but I couldn't cope up with the uncertainties associated with it and had to switch to physics. Albert Einstein had option to switch over but Rajiv was in a catch-22 situation because while he joined Indian Air Force, while he joined Indian Air Force, he had taken oath on commissioning that he is going to serve the country with honor and pride. So he had to move on. The The real situation came to light when I landed up in my first posting field posting Agra, generally mischievously known as Agira, Agira by our young officers of Indian Air Force. And the young pilot officer Rajiv within no time realized that it is not of importance to top the Air Force staff college, staff college at Coimbatore because unless you meet the military aviation needs which are very specific and very delicate actually. So I had no option to but to carry on. Well, the task was difficult. The task was difficult for two reasons. The first reason was the to issue accurate weather forecast, forecast for the you know flying machines which were really vulnerable because of their vintage value and high speeds and that too with the limited inputs available to you as a forecaster and also the tools, the primitive tools, the processes available to you as a weatherman in Indian Air Force at that time in 1987. But the second reason was bigger and more challenging and that reason ladies and gentlemen was facing the audience every day in the mass briefing and you know what kind of audience? 
300 air crew, the pilots, the signals, ATC officers and so on. How to face them in case your focus has gone wrong the previous day. Imagine. So, there was always some kind of, you know, mantan going on, initial one or two months in my life, when I joined Agra and I had perhaps two choices when it came to my profession. Either to adopt the defensive focus approach to save my skin later. But the problem here was that in this bargain, I will create a lot of opportunity losses for my stakeholders, that is pilots, if they cannot fly just because I want to keep the safe margins. The second choice was to have an assertive approach, no matter how risk heavy, no matter how risk heavy, with hardly any safer margins. But this also had a problem, associated problem, because in this case, there was a problem of physical losses, physical losses of accidents, incidents and consequent lifts having lost of pilots or even the aircraft for that matter. But I still chose the second option, the later option, the courtesy was my own first mentor, late group captain Ashok Nanavati, who always used to stall, I mean looks tall in the crowd and was actually, you know, uh, became my role model when it came to the style of forecasting. So I kept on giving customized, tailor-specific forecast for the aviation needs, no matter how risky. And in the bargain, I earned the confidence of my stakeholders, whether they were air crew and other users of services. But in the bargain, what I remember very distinctly, there was always a risk of facing court of inquiries if I go wrong and the accidents or incidents happen. To cut it short, what I want to say that it was basically a professional challenge. How? Let me explain to you. This, in this brought the importance of professional challenges in life actually. Generally, if you look at all around us, you will find there are professional challenges when we join any new profession. For example, the pilots, whether they are fighter pilots, transport pilots or helicopter pilots, they have a professional hazard of risk. Which risk? Life risk. When it comes to the meteorological officers and ATC officers, air traffic control officers, they have the risk of life of others on their shoulders. When it comes to the profession of doctors, it comes to the risk of both things, the life of others and your professional repute. And when it comes to future corporators and entrepreneurs like you, you will always have perhaps to deliver and there will be a risk of delivery of time, delivery of effectiveness. Don't you think so? The first lesson, ladies and gentlemen, is of courage of conviction. That means no matter whatever your professional hazards are, you need to convert your professional hazards into professional challenges. The second lesson is that no matter whatever stakes you have, merely developing love for your profession, getting married to your organization at the earliest, you will bring asset, you will bring asset in your life and that asset is going to be the people in the organization. You will be surprised that as I grew in Air Force, my assertiveness rather than keeping, you know, it decreasing, it kept on increasing because of the meteorological sense which I developed over a period of time and at times I was being referred as human weather radar of the station. That means I had earned the confidence of my stakeholders, the people in the organization, the most important assets. The last part, if you continue to be assertive in life when it comes to your profession or personal life, you are going to be not just individual, you are going to prove yourself a brand. And if you look around in your campus, in this BITS campus, you will find, you will really find that you are having all around you lot of future and current brand ambassadors.